Oh boy, everyone. Here's a good one. The Atrium. The deepest, darkest twists and turns of Don't Starve Together. Entering this nightmare is a challenge. Navigating the nightmares that roam the halls of this nightmare is a challenge. And then it all ends with a big, bad nightmare challenge at the end of it. So, oh yes. The atrium means business, even if most of its intimidating looks are exactly that. But thankfully, we mean business too. But let us begin with what the atrium is essentially, as it really wouldn't be too terribly wrong of you to just simply compare it to the labyrinth. Cause, well, it kind of is. We'll be encountering familiar mobs, bounties, layouts, and more in relation to the two biomes. However, the issue with the atrium is that it's not actually connected to the rest of the ruined system. So, what the heck gives there? Well, here's where that first challenge begins, folks. For you see, these big old tentacles down under actually serve as the wormholes of the caves, and one of them, yes, only one of them is our ticket to the atrium proper. Fighting these things isn't really that hard, as long as you have the patience to deal with the baby slappers slowly or just wait for them to despawn on the other side of where you're hitting the thing. But if you've got a team or even just some explosives, then it's way easier. Just dogpile them or blow the towering head die up. Defeat one, hop in, and hope that it's the one that you're looking for. Big tentacles are definitely the first big bottleneck of this whole adventure. But fortunately, there are ways around this potential trial and error with the big hentai. If you get lucky, that is. For you see, if the atrium happens to spawn close enough to the rest of your world branches via world gen, you can take advantage of a lazy explorer's telepoof ability in order to enter the atrium scot-free essentially. Plus, for you Wartox players out there, you can just simply do the same with your very own soul hop ability. You'll most certainly need Mongols to take advantage of this, but this in and of itself is obviously the preferred method for most folk out there, I'd imagine. So great, you're in, but you've already hit a roadblock. The obelisks. To anyone who has ever played Adventure Mode, you know where this is going. But to those who have no idea what the heck these things are, or what they do, hear me out, as your journey depends on it. Obelisks are sanity gates that will remain up and prevent passing when player sanities are above 15% and will lower when our sanities drop below 15%. And they're about to block darn near every path and intersection in this place, but of course world generations will differ. Now, some will actually work in the opposite direction and raise when we're insane and drop while we're sane, so you gotta be mindful there. Either way, you will be needing sanity management, be it via food or preferably a nightmare amulet or two. Don't forget them. That or just telepoof around them, I guess. Ah, now here are some familiar sights that will also block our paths. Damaged clockworks. They litter the ruins, they are found in the labyrinth, and you will definitely encounter some here mostly past obelisks at particular intersections. And you usually find more than just bishops alone, I just kinda got unlucky here. And I can't really help you fight them yourself either, obviously, but my word of advice is this. If you get a rook, perhaps just have them fight each other by specifically having the rook ram into the others. The thing is, if you're coming to the atrium though, you should probably be ready for these machines regardless. So, good luck. And yet another mob that you should be already acquainted with is the Dangling Depth Dweller. Especially if you have already been through most of the wilds, the ruins proper even, and most definitely the labyrinth before ever coming here. You can fight them, sure, but I really would just try your best to stick to the edges of their webbing. There's really no need to create any more problems for yourself, especially in this place. Just stick to the edges and they won't even spawn and you can be on your way. But for those who don't know, dangling death dwellers are just kind of the green spiders, just white and in the caves. But speaking of problems, or perhaps even an odd lack of them, ancient obelisks replace nightmare lights here in the atrium. 
However, here's the deal with the Nightmare Cycle here in the Atrium. It actually doesn't exist. There's no Nightmare Fissures, no Nightmare Lights, or these obelisks will even spawn nightmares during a cycle, you name it. Now, I can't say that's entirely true, as the Nightmare Cycle does affect certain things, and that these ancient obelisks will actually drain your sanities no matter the cycle. It isn't until the player activates the Ancient Gateway, where the Atrium actually comes alive, for a lack of a better term, because otherwise it's relatively tame. Heck, again, these things don't even spawn nightmares at all. In fact, and this might surprise you, a lot of the dressing of the Atrium is exactly that, and won't actually do anything, or even allow us to interact with it in any way. Like the ancient statues you will see around these parts. Sure, they look exactly like the ones that we can mine in the ruins, and even change appearances with the Nightmare Cycle. But that's it, they have nothing more to them. And the same is actually going to go for all the ancient beacons throughout this place. Although, they will have a very nice glow to them once the ancient key is inserted into the ancient gateway. But finally, even the ancient fences around these parts don't actually require much discussion either. That said, they only lower for players and block other mobs. So, there's that I guess. Now don't let all that fool you. The atrium is still dangerous, is still full of challenge, and has some cool stuff to it. Like the ornate chest, perhaps. Like the labyrinth, the atrium has plenty of these things around for you, if you choose to go get them. However, I have always personally never bothered. Not only can they be trapped, their loot has never really seemed worth it to me. But, have fun. Ah, but here's where the real fun begins, everyone. Ancient murals. These slabs of stone are found all along the path to the ancient gateway, and with each examination, our characters detail and hint at the rise and fall of the ancients and their civilization. How the Nightmare Fuel was both their savior and demon, and plenty more to go along with that. With Maxwell actually knowing far more than the rest of the bunch. They are pretty darn neat, and we will talk about them more in depth soon again. But, in reality, they kinda are really just another dressing item for the biome. And as we already know, or maybe not, perhaps, the biome eventually leads us to the ancient gateway and the quote-unquote final boss in the Ancient Fuel Weaver. We will be needing to have killed the Ancient Guardian for the Ancient Key, which when socketed of course, kinda activates the Atrium as we alluded to. We're also gonna have to have killed the Shadow Pieces for the Shadow Atrium, and of course have done all the other jazz in between all that. But yes, the Atrium is its home turf everyone. I've heard the fight has changed a bit, so perhaps we need to revisit it soon. So. I'll see you then. But one last brief note, actually. To get the loot from the middle of these pits, no matter where you find them down here, we're gonna need to equip a lazy forager crafted from the pseudoscience station. Simple enough. But there you have it, everyone. The atrium of Don't Starve Together. As I said at the start here, challenging all around, but nothing you cannot handle that you haven't already up to this point. Plan ahead, plan accordingly, be patient, and you will conquer it with ease. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Just don't get lost in those halls, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.